the bank the banker and the banked proudly brought to you by Africa Guarantee Fund Hello and welcome to yet another edition of The Bank, The Banker and The Banked. The show that brings you up close with the key decision makers that are moving the wheels of business finance in Kenya's economy. My name is Stephen Kimani. Now on this week's edition, we'll throw the spotlight on a non-banking financial institution that specializes in providing capital to high impact businesses that are at the grassroots level. I'm talking about the Grassroots Business Fund. But first, let's take a look at GBF's history and impact so far. Grassroots Business Fund, GBF, is a global impact organization that utilizes the power of blended capital to invest in traditionally underfinanced businesses. Founded in 2004 as an initiative of the International Finance Corporation, GBF's mission is to grow viable, sustainable, and inclusive businesses that generate incomes or cost savings for lower income people in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. GBF's work spans across agribusiness, handicrafted manufacturing, as well as products and services. In Africa, GBF has committed 1.2 billion shillings, with four farms currently under its wings. Between January 2019 in December 2019, GBF's investees created slightly over 3.2 billion shillings of economic value for underserved communities globally. With that, let's dive straight into my conversation with Lillian Mramba, the Africa Regional Director for the Grassroots Business Fund. Let's begin uh, up close and personal. Let's get to know Lillian Mramba. Who is she? And what's, what's basically been her journey to the current role that uh, you're playing at uh, the Grassroots Business Fund? Yeah, so uh, I, I would say Lillian Mramba is a, is a capitalist with a big heart. Uh, that, that's definitely how we view ourselves here at GBF. Uh, my background is in audit. Uh, so I started my career doing uh, audits. I started in the United States, but I always had this desire to to have work that is, is more meaningful. And for me, meaningful was to do work where I felt that I was helping others. Um, and at that time, um, you know, doing audits, as much as we were working with uh, resource constrained clients, it just didn't feel like it was enough. And I wanted to come back home and I wanted to play a role in development in this region. And so I went back to school to really study amongst other things to study development finance and the role of development finance uh, in emerging markets. And that's where I found out about GBF and this new space. This was now over 10 years ago. I'm, I'm dating myself. So I found out about this new space called impact investing and how it's uh, straddling both uh, the capital world or capitalism and, and the philanthropy world and how you, we balance those two to achieve uh, this dual purpose. And that really spoke to me and and that's how I sort of really clawed my way into into this industry, uh, having coming having come from a completely different background. Well, you've, you've just mentioned a, a word that I've also heard a lot: impact investing. Probably you could just unpack for us what is impact investing all about. Yeah. So to me, impact investing is. Uh, the, the channeling capital uh, with the purpose of uh, both generating fin financial returns and generating what we call social impact or development impact. Uh, there's a really sort of wide continuum of impact investors. They are ones who are impact first. So they'll say we'll sacrifice financial returns because we really want to have very deep impact that commercial investors are not interested in. There are others that are say, okay, we're an impact investor, but we have, we're finance first. So we want to generate impact, but we're not going to sacrifice our returns. And GPF really is right in the middle uh, where we say we want to generate both financial returns and impact returns simultaneously. And we're going to support companies and support business models that allow us 
to do that. And, and I think your, res your, your, your response really is a perfect segue into my next question, which is grassroots business funds. Um, for those who probably don't know what grassroots business fund does, um, could you just give us a bit of a background on how it started and what business it does? G, uh, GBF, uh, we, we call ourselves or we see ourselves as an impact um, mission-driven organization. We started back in 2004. We started as a, as a program within the International Finance Corporation, which is part of the World Bank Group. Uh, and it was started with um, IFC employees who had this vision that out there in, in the universe, there was this very special segment of small businesses that were uh, playing a really important role in marginalized communities, um, but they weren't receiving the support that they deserve, both, both in terms of the uh, access to finance and access to business advice to help them grow. And if at that point, IFC and the World Bank could support these businesses and, and see them through their growth path, then we could generate a lot of uh, benefits to these marginalized communities. So, so that was the original idea. Um, the organization became independent of the World Bank Group in 2008, um, so formed a, se a separate not-for-profit uh, with a lot of support from, from the bank and from other donors to continue doing its work as, um, as an independent organization. So again, our mission uh, remains, which is we, we try and find what we call underserved SMEs and uh, underserved by traditional financial markets. And we, we channel long-term risk-sharing capital. We provide them with business advice and business support. And this could be, you know, it's underserved because it is a business that's operating predominantly in rural areas, so supplying products and services um, to these markets, very difficult, uh, or business that has supply arrangements either because they're working with really small artisans spread out in rural areas or working with smallholder farmers again re areas that would be considered um, maybe a bit too high risk for traditional financiers certainly traditional long-term capital providers uh, but we say that we're going to uh, use our position as an organization that can channel both public and private funding to find a way to support and, and grow these businesses very well. As I was going through um, GBF's website, one of the key words that I came across is that GBF targets high-impact businesses. Um, probably could un unpack for us, what will a high-impact business look like? Um, who does GBF serve in this case? Yeah. So, so not to cause controversy, uh, this is a GBF-defined term. Uh, and it's not a philosophical term. We, we believe in business in general, um, but we had to identify who our core audience is, who is it that we're trying to reach. And for us, a high impact business uh, is exactly sort of how I've described. This is a uh, small business, uh, it's typically privately held, uh, hasn't had access to long-term capital, much long-term capital be be beyond um, the founders themselves. It's usually owner-operated or family-run uh, businesses. Again, it's operating in suboptimal uh, markets, either because they are rural markets with productivity is low or uh, the supply chain challenges. So it's, it's a business that um, it's a for-profit, you know, profit-driven business, but it's facing challenges both uh, by virtue of where they operate and who they serve, and also by virtue by, of how they're instituted in, internally. And, and this is who we say, let's just, let's support this company. Let's help them grow because, again, ultimately, if we're thinking about development from a big picture perspective, if we're going to grow our uh, economies, we want to make sure everybody's coming along uh, in, that, in that growth story. Very well. Um, let's now deep dive into the impact of GP, uh, GBF's activities in Kenya. What are some of the success stories that you can relate to us around what GBF has been doing in Kenya? Yeah, so again, GBF, we've been in Kenya since 2004. Uh, we, we opened up our office in 2010. We're very proud of, of the companies and, and the work uh, that our uh, companies have done in Kenya. Uh, we see our successes. Um, we really count sort of every small success that we see. And, and oftentimes, 
it is, you know, we are working with uh, an agricultural exporter who's working with smallholder farmers. When we entered the company, that company um, were needed some support in building up their managing capacity and improving the productivity of smallholder farmers. The, com the company needed to um, have, a, have better cash flow management. If at the point of exit, we've achieved um, a good ma majority of those goals, we would consider that as a success. And we have a lot of examples of companies that uh, have gone on and raised much bigger capital than ours, have, uh, have attracted capital for more commercial investors. All of those are tiny success stories. Uh, so I don't want to overlook them. But perhaps um, one of our of our biggest story here in Kenya is uh, an organization called Yehudi Kilimo, which uh, we, uh, in partnership with then KREP uh, Bank, uh, formulated this idea of starting a financial institution that was going to cater to farmers. We originally wanted to focus on dairy farmers, providing them you know with access to finance, and and GPF and KREP sort of designed this business plan while he was still in Kerab, uh, funded it, uh, spun it out of Kerab, uh, brought in the first CEO. That company has since, you know, flourished beyond beyond GBF. Um, so that's just an example of some of the things that we've done. But again, don't want to discount some of the smaller successes, but, you know, play part of, of the overall bigger picture as well. But I'm sure since GBF ventured into the local scene, there have been challenges. Um, and you've mentioned agriculture as one of the sectors in which uh, GBF has had an active hand. Um, probably you could just unpack for us, what are some of the challenges that GBF has faced in Kenya? Yeah, well, one of the reasons, you know, when you're in this, uh, in this space, impact investing or private equity in general, you hear a lot about, oh, there's a pipeline problem. Uh, financiers aren't able to find companies to support. Um, and that's sort of one of the challenges that we see as well is we see a lot of really great companies with growth potential, but aren't quite ready yet, uh, to, uh, take in commercial capital. Again, as much as we have this dual mission, we raise funds from investors who have, uh, commercial expectations of us. They want us to return the funds with, with a return. And so we do need to find companies that are ready to you know, take on that commercial growth. And sometimes we find we find them that they're a bit early, they need a bit of uh, support before they can take on uh, our kind of capital. And so that's, that's frustrating because you see the potential there, but you're just not able to engage. Uh, we're looking at ways to speak with our partners to see how uh, GBF can, can provide this kind of support for a period of time before being able to invest in in the business. And this is not just a Kenya challenge alone. This is across all the markets that GBF is, has, um, has, is working in and has worked at. So it's, it's something that we are certainly trying to see. How do we uh, improve the pipeline of companies that are coming in um, by maybe working a bit early in an advisory capacity building the strength companies to be able to take on com commercial capital and i'm sure some of your your listeners are going to say what i didn't even know that this type of funding exists uh you never came up to me so how do you know that the pattern is not there so i would say that's the second challenge is communication uh, it's, it's a relatively impact investment space is relatively uh new and relatively unknown especially to um to some of the local founders and the local uh, owners of companies that we want to support. So trying to get our name out there, organizing ourselves in a way that um, a vast majority of, of business leaders who are running SMEs on a day-to-day -day basis are aware of the different kinds of capital that are available. Uh, we certainly see ourselves as complementary to bank financing. We're not here to displace banks. Um, but we want to we want for owners to understand that there is a different kind of capital that you can layer on to the bank product that you have, and so so part of us speaking to you is just to get that word out there because we we want to find uh, great companies that are doing great things um, to support. Very well, and um, I'm I'm thinking about somebody who is watching this interview and uh, is probably saying, "I'm here. I would like some support from GBF." 
uh, probably you could tell us what are some of the things that you probably you have in your checklist as you're picking on somebody to invest in and what sort of engagement do you have is it do you take up a stake in that company how's the engagement like from the time from the point of identification the time when now you um, have already um, shall I say put the company in your fold in terms of financing so um, we we manage uh, pools of funds, and each fund has its own mandate. Uh, we're currently at the tail end of ma managing our first fund, which is a global fund we deployed in other markets beyond uh, beyond East Africa. Uh, and so we're currently right now looking for a managing facility that's looking to support specifically agribusinesses that are either youth-led or women-led in East Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, uh, that's looking for, uh, you know, growth capital to, to take them to the ne next phase. So that's, so that's specifically what we're looking for right now. In terms of the, uh, sh the stage in which the company is in, uh, we're not an equity investor, so we don't come in and we taking up equity stakes in, in companies. Again, we invest a lot in family businesses and privately held businesses that uh, may not be appropriate and it may not be the desire of the, of the family from the onset to bring in an external partner. We deploy a product called Mezzanine Finance, which uh, is a debt product that uh, typically takes on a lot more risk than a typical uh, loan would, but not as much risk as an equity investor would. Uh, so we, we, we this, that's basically how we how we engage in, in a company. We are a long term partner. Um, in addition to providing the company with this long term finance, we also provide uh, business support services, which we think is a really key part of us engaging in the company and us as uh, a partner in the company achieving our common goals. Uh, some of the support we can do before we invest. So if we come in and we say we really want to work with you, however, we see certain areas operationally that the company has to address and we are able to work with, with the company, we'll do that before we deploy our capital. But certainly um, after a company has come onto our portfolio, we usually have a program first two years of things that we both want to work with. Again, a lot of the, um, a lot of areas Companies know, they know uh, for the most part the support that they would like. They have ambitions and they know what they need in order to achieve those ambitions. And we're just providing them with additional uh, funding so that they're able to achieve those goals much earlier than if they were relying on their own internally uh, derived cash flows. Very well. How long does GBF en engage in terms of that finance, um, financing arrangement? Is it, is it a short term? Is it medium term? How many years typically? Five, five to seven years. That's sort of our, our typical uh, tenor. Uh, right now, we're, we're doing slightly shorter, three, three and a half, just because of the kind of capital that we're, we're managing. But, but going forward, we certainly want to play a, a much longer. Uh, we want to have a much longer engagement with the companies that we support. Let's now take a short break. I'll be right back after the break with more details on the Grassroots Business Fund on this week's edition of the bank, the banker, and the banked.